Hey guys, we got a brand new battery to take a look at today. This is the 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery by DSpeak, Day, DaySpeak. This company is fairly new. They just began selling these on Amazon and they sent one out here to us for testing and evaluation. So we'll do our usual video today. We'll take a look at the external characteristics. We'll do a capacity test, then we'll tear it down and see how it's built inside. This case is fairly similar to most of the batteries we have reviewed. I did notice it does have the UL logo in the bottom left corner here. To my knowledge, this battery is not UL listed as a whole. Uh, however, that may be referring to the cells inside. That is kind of misleading. These are epoxied in terminals and they do appear to be brass bolts. Yep, they are not magnetic, so these are most likely brass bolts. These are the bolts we usually get with batteries and you can see these are magnetic. So uh, This battery came with a very simple specification sheet. It's not really a user's manual. Um, but it is presented in a variety of languages. Uh, nominal capacity for this one is 100 amp hours, and this is telling us that is at a 0.3 C rate. Uh, so the max charge current is 0.5 C or 50 amps. And interestingly, I don't see the maximum discharge rating on here. I believe it said on the website it was 100 amps. Not really a whole lot to see in here. And this battery has completed charging. As per usual, I used my Ames Power 12 volt lithium iron phosphate charger. And this is a fairly standard test. I'm connected to a Batrium shunt. Over here we can see voltage, amperage, wattage, discharged amp hours, and discharged watt hours. My load is a series of incandescent light bulbs connected to a 2000 watt inverter. And we're pulling approximately 222 watts. We'll be back when this test concludes. And our discharge test concluded at 100.9 amp hours. That's a lot smaller than I was expecting. Look how tiny that thing is. And it's seated in, in this rubber stuff the whole way around. And that's quite a bit of rubber stuff. That's a good three, four inches up the case that rubber stuff is going. So uh, this is actually seated in here very, very nicely. So our main positive and our main negative cables here. These are seven gauge conductors, silicone insulated with a 200 degrees Celsius insulation rating. They are crimped onto a lug, which is bolted down to the bottom side of the terminal. They really should have held this cable when they were tightening it down to prevent it from spinning at this sharp angle like this, but... Guys, look at the amount of rubber in there. That's, that's a lot of rubber, and that adds a lot of weight to this battery. And that rubber piece weighs 5 pounds and 10 ounces. All right, so this battery is comprised of cells which I do not recognize. They are aluminum case prismatic cells. They are green. They're a bit longer than what I'm used to seeing. Um, but first, let's take a look at the BMS here. It appears to be model number JH120A-TG2-V2.1. So this is a 120 amp BMS. I do like the surface area and the mass of these copper contacts, and you can see it going in underneath there. So that's a pretty nice BMS connection as opposed to some of the others we see where they try to solder the silicone wire directly to the printed circuit board. Right, so while I was removing this negative terminal, I was using this wrench and I accidentally uh, knocked the wrench into the side of the battery here. And I know a lot of people say that there is uh, no conductivity on these cases or it's a high resistance conductivity, but it made a pretty big spark here. And and you can see the little scratch mark there where it penetrated the shrink wrap. And uh, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but there is a tiny burn mark right there on the ratchet. So look how this thing is assembled. This is pretty unique. So they've got these main posts coming off of the battery. There's like a center pin that's going down. I don't know if that's a screw. There's no head on it. Uh, it almost looks like a, a rivet or something, but it's definitely not a rivet. There's no movement. So you can see on the main negative here, uh, there's simply a Phillips screw holding it in. But on each of the adjoining connections, they actually have a piece of copper going across the two terminals. And those copper pieces are also held down with Phillips screws. And then they have the balance lead soldered directly to this copper piece. So that's a pretty unique design. I've not seen anything like this in the other batteries we have reviewed. Uh, the balance leads are nicely routed through the center and there was a piece of foam over top of these to hold this down. Here you can see the vents of one of the cells. I guess the other three are covered up with this black foam. We can also see one of the QR codes here. I'm going to pause for a moment and go look that up on the computer, see if I can find anything about it. Alright, so I couldn't find anything really about these cells online. 
<clears throat> with those QR codes. There is another barcode here underneath the tape and there's another label here which doesn't really have any useful information other than I did notice it says June 1st, 2022, so these are fairly recent cells. I don't see any bloating or anything on the cells to suggest they are used, or at least not heavily used. Uh, they do have some of the gray rubber between the cells. That's why there's a bit of space here. Um, you can kind of see it down in the bottom here. Other than that, there's not much else to see here. I can't really tell much. Taking a closer look at the construction of the BMS, you can see those copper bars I was talking about. Uh, and this actually looks done pretty well. I don't see any sloppy, you know, soldering type jobs like we've seen on some of the cheaper BMSs. So uh, now there is one temperature sensor in the center of the FET transistors here. And the manufacturer does tell me that this temperature sensor should work for low temperature charging protection. So they must watch my videos if they specifically pointed the sensor out. Uh, when they sent me this battery. So we'll give it a test here and just verify that it does indeed work. So we've got the bench power supply connected here. The left display is showing current. The right display is showing voltage. We're going to spray this temperature sensor with some of this computer duster, uh, which should drop it well below freezing and just make sure that this power supply shuts off. Uh, and we are charging at 8.96 amps. There we go, it instantly shut down. That was like three or four seconds, instant shutdown. Uh, so we're also going to test the high temperature charge protection with a heat gun here. Uh, and you see we shut down there as well. That was about eight to nine seconds and after it cools off, it began charging again. One thing that is worth noting though is that as the sensor is jammed under the transistors here, uh, it's going to be picking up heat from these transistors. So uh, if this is charging, I highly doubt this is ever going to see below freezing temperatures. However, if your battery is like outdoors overnight and you pick it up to charge in the morning or, you know, maybe it's in your camper or your RV and you go to start up in the morning, um, the entire battery at that point will still be cold. So this will still prevent it from charging while it's below freezing. However, optimally, the low temperature sensor should be positioned directly on the battery or on the battery terminals. But this is certainly better than no protection at all. All right, guys, so this battery checks out pretty good. It met the rate of capacity. The high and low temperature charge protection works. Uh, it's built pretty well. I mean, these, these bus bars are a little bit different. However, it is interesting to see a different build design. You know, some of these batteries we get are the same thing over and over again, just in a different manufacturer, a different kind of case. So it is fun to see something different. As always, I'd love to know what you guys think, if you have any questions or comments. These batteries do sell for only $279 on Amazon. I will leave a link down in the video description to where you can purchase one or find out more if you are interested. As always, please hit that like button before you go and thanks for watching.